Okay, I will teach you basics of complex numbers. This sounds scary, but they are not that complex. So we will start with, you, with what you already know. I'm going to draw a basic number line. We have 0, 1, 2, 3. Numbers increase this way. So we have 4, I don't know, 3.5. The square root of 2, or approximately 1.41, would be here. We have, you know, negative 2 in here, whatever. This is the real line, and we have real numbers along this line. So this real number would be something like, I don't know, 5.2, whatever. Um, so the difference with complex numbers is basically that we are going to generalize the notion of what it means to be a number. And we will do that by adding a second number line going this way. And we will have, you know, numbers going this way as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot. We call this the imaginary axis. This is the real axis, imaginary axis. Now, this is what we call the complex plane, and every point in here, in this complex plane, is a complex number. So every complex number, as you can see, has a real component and an imaginary component. For this complex number in particular, the real component is something like 4, the complex, uh, the imaginary component is, uh, I don't know, 7. Sometimes mathematicians like to write this as 4 plus 7i. This is the complex number that has 4 as its real component and 7 as the imaginary component. So that's all it means. By the way, do not be fooled by the name imaginary, because there's nothing imaginary about this. I don't know why they call it that. It's just a second component to every number. So these real numbers, for example like 4, are now a special case of a complex number where the imaginary part is 0, because, you know, they lie on the real line, exactly. They don't need any imaginary part to them. So now, the real numbers are only a special case, and we have this more general notion of a complex number, and it can have both a real part and an imaginary part, and that's what that's all it means basically. So the complex numbers are not too complex really. Okay, so this is where the fun part begins. We know how to do math with real numbers. It's very easy. Uh, what's two plus three? Well, you'll tell me. I don't know. It's five. What's two times three? you'll tell me six. You know how to do math with real numbers. But how do you do math with complex numbers? What's 2 plus 3i plus, I don't know, 1 plus 4i? What is that? How do you do math with complex numbers? Or, for example, what's 2 plus 3i times 1 plus 4i? So I'll show you now how mathematicians define these operations on complex numbers. And uh, it's rather intuitive. To do addition, you just add real components separately of the imaginary components. So it's pretty boring. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 4 7. You just added two complex numbers. Very easy. Multiplication, same way. If you want to multiply things inside brackets like this, you always do it this times that, plus this times that, plus this times that, plus this times that. So four additions of all possible combinations. So this is 2 times 1, 2, plus 2 times 4i, 8i, plus 3i times 1, 3i, plus 3i times 4i. And I will just write that for now. 4i times 3i. So we have 2 plus 8 and 3 is 11i, plus, and this is where the fun part is. Mathematicians defined i times i, or i squared, to be negative 1. Seems rather arbitrary, but we will see that this exactly leads to all kinds of interesting behavior. So i times i is going to give you negative 1, and then 4 times 3 it gives you 12. So 12 times negative 1, it's negative 12. So the result of this multiplication of two complex numbers is going to be 2 minus 12, or negative 10, plus 11i. This is the result of this complex multiplication. Okay, so I just showed you how you can multiply and add two complex numbers, but you should really have a geometric in intuition of what's going on, especially for multiplication. You know, addition is boring because you just do uh, real and measuring parts separately and you just add them. That's boring. But multiplying two complex numbers is much more fun. Let's have two complex numbers, let's say here and here. So these two complex numbers have their real and imaginary components, just like we said. But you can think of it, them as having something else in it equivalently. If we draw lines to both of them, these two lines both 
have an angle that they make with the real line so let's say this is I don't know 20 degrees and also along this angle how far do you have to go to get to your complex number so let's say this would be 3 you have to go 3 along 20 degrees to get to your complex number for this it could be I don't know this could be I don't know what it is 30 degrees and let's say 2 along it to get to your second complex number so when you multiply these numbers what do you get well it turns out that the result will be along the sum of these two angles so 30 plus 20 is going to be 50 so let's say that's this this line is 50 degrees along uh, with respect to our real line so this would be 50 degrees here and now how far do you have to go to get to the multiplication result well what you do is you multiply the lengths 2 times 3 is 6 so you have to go 6 along here to get to the result this would be the result let's say that's 6 so you add the two angles but you multiply the two lengths okay so in conclusion I have introduced the notion of a complex number it lives in the complex plane we have the real and the imaginary part and I showed you how you can add and multiply two complex numbers and I showed you the geometrical interpretation of uh, multiplying two complex numbers and that's going to be important when we look at when we try to analyze the fractals and how they arise and we will see that this multiplication actually can lead to some very very interesting rich dynamics and we will be looking at that soon that's it for now